We need to re-sign Wayno Agreed. right now. How much? 25. Five-year deal? Yeah, four-year. Four-year deal. Four years. 25 apiece. Take him up to his age 45 season? I think that's fair. I think the, the fan base would agree with me on that. How about this? Re-sign that man now. Cam, only nine games back in the wild card, baby. Whoa. I mean, things are turning around. Only nine games back. And everybody who wanted Andrew Chafin now can hit, can go ahead and look at his one bad outing and say, see? See? <laughs> see? See what happened? And the, How about wow. this? For a narrative switch, though. What? The new narrative is, now that Adam Wainwright is pitching so well, so well. Yep. now we trade him to a contender, and also, for his benefit, the only way he'll ever get 200 wins is to go somewhere else because the Cardinals' bullpen will blow all of his They'll leads. They'll blow the leads. How about that for a narrative switch? Was the camera yeah. on him? Was the camera on Wayno when Gallegos just gave served up the, it up? Served it up. Did, was, a, was a camera on him? I'm just curious. I did not see that reaction. Okay. But listen, at this point of the season, winning is secondary. Wayno's 200 wins is number one. Mm-hmm. And also... The trade deadline. I was looking at MLB.com. It said who's most likely to be traded. They had a nice graphic. They had a nice picture of a bunch of players. Only one Cardinal. Contreras. Jack Flaherty. Oh, yeah? This was just the MLB.com homepage. Oh, I read an article by uh, Ben Fred today. It's about Contreras. And I look at him, I'm like, of all the stuff that he's kind of gone through with the Cardinals <laughs> after they messed up signing him, like, I kind of feel bad for the guy a little bit. Like, I like him. I don't feel bad because he's making money. Don't get me wrong. But as far as, like, being treated, I'm just like, damn. Like, you did it. Well, he's getting paid. I know he's getting paid. But it's, it's just- also, he messed up, too. Listen, the Cardinals, you don't sign a guy, you don't sign a catcher if you don't like the way he catches. So how'd he mess up? Well, if the reports are true that he's calling pitches that the pitchers don't have. <laughs> like uh, knuckleballs and stuff? Well, if he's calling Slurs. sliders to guys that don't have it, if he's calling... Or the pitchers suck and they want an escape goat. Well, it's, you know? it's both, though. Okay. okay, but Cam, again, no one's saying he's a great catcher. I'm not saying he's the worst catcher on earth defensively. How many times in your history of anybody here, text line, mm-hmm. how many times in your history of watching baseball, I can never remember this ever happening. I can never remember a team literally taking a catcher who's been in the big league seven, eight years and saying... We need to sit you out for eight days and teach you how to catch, or teach you how to catch I'm the just, cardinal way. I'm just curious on what he really did wrong. Was it obvious? Could you could you look at Contreras and be like, he's giving them the knuckleball sign again, confusing everybody? Did you notice that? Well, you're talking about you have pitch com and all that. Uh, okay, I'm just saying like, was it was there like, when you're watching this guy catch? Are you like, man, he's just, he didn't have it. Like, can you notice it? He boxes some balls. But this is more about, okay, so we're talking about when you're, you're saying what I can see. First of all, everybody knows Wilson Contreras has a cannon. Is he the best receiver? He is not. But we knew that coming in. Does he box some balls? Yes. Define is that. He, Sorry. Just, is, is he the best framer, okay. presenter of pitches? Okay. No, he's not. But we knew that coming in. He has an absolute cannon. All right? We can all see that. The difference is the behind the scenes of calling a game. By the way, I do think he was a scapegoat for a really bad pitching staff and and still has been. But I'm I'm saying he has a role in this as well. Right? When Flaherty did his press conference months ago, where it kind of started on that Thursday, if you remember. Yeah. This started on a on I think it was a Thursday. It was the game where I think Flaherty got lit up by the Angels. Yeah. And the next Saturday was the big news day when Wilson Contreras is now going to be an outfielder. (laughs) <laughs> okay, that happened a couple days. And whatever that day was, Flaherty said something along the lines of, it just doesn't make sense. What we're calling doesn't make sense. You know, the sequencing of, of pitches doesn't make sense. Then you have the Michael K. report. He's a Yankees broadcaster. Now you folks can do and draw your own conclusions. To me, if we have a former Yankees pitcher, maybe that's his source. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But maybe. Now this is just me sitting on a bar stool. I would say, well, maybe that's his source. If Michael K. reports that Wilson Contreras is calling pitches that the pitchers don't have, that is a problem. That's a problem. Mm, but a big bit. picture, big picture, you knew what you were getting with Wilson Contreras, and you signed him to a five-year deal, and now if you, if you believe, and I do, the Bob Nightingale report that he's on the trade block, halfway into the first year. What do you think, Cole? Well, since Cat's not here, I will speak for He's him. He's coming on, too, by the way. What, yeah. 9, 9.30? Uh, nine, 9 o'clock, Cat's coming okay. on. What about Kiz? 
Uh, West, West Coast. West yeah. Coast kids. No, we can't do that to him. So we uh, we got to keep him rested up. Uh, but since if Cat were here, what he would say, and what I agree with, I hate to admit, is that the catching ERA was noticeable. There were multiple pitch. There were three or four pitchers on the staff, and I haven't checked the stat in a while. But as of a couple months ago. There were pet pitchers with like a six or seven ERA with Contreras and like a two or a three with Kiz. And so there's got to be something there. Is it the pitch com? Or is he calling the wrong pitches? I don't know. Uh, all I know, pitchers are really weird birds. They are very, very, very particular. And so it wouldn't shock me if maybe the pitchers were making a big deal out of something that wasn't because they're so That's particular. And, and I, I'm not going to – I'm not going to pretend like I know exactly what detail it is, but the stats did bear it out that that he was when when Kiz when Kiz was catching rather they were apparently more comfortable and they were definitely more productive. It just seems like the pitchers got put in a jam. They're not pitching well. They're getting taken a lot of flack. They're not used to it. And all of a sudden they're like, "Well, the who's the new guy? Yeah, it's Contreras. Wow, I can't pitch them. It's, all, it's not my fault. It's this guy, the new guy." It's a new guy. I can't do it. That's what it seems like. That's what it looks like to me. Yeah, and he's been, just ca- does. He's been catching in the big leagues for like six years, and all of a sudden he comes here and he just forgets now it's all everything. His fault. Everything's his fault. Like, okay. Well, no one said that. We, we well, need to. There's a lot of blame that goes towards Contreras. Been right, but we need, we need to, in my opinion, we need to work in the nuance here. This is why no one ever says it's just one person's fault. It's not all Ali's fault, but some of it's his fault. Yeah. Okay. It's not all Mosellock's fault, but a lot of it's his fault. It's not all Contreras' fault. But some of it's his fault. And by the way, this pitching staff overall, so I was trying to find it, Cole. Now, this is a long time ago. This is April 30th. But at the time, Contreras in 23 games, the staff ERA 4.79. Kisner, 3.34. This is end of April. So I'm trying to find more recent. Yeah. But back then, you're talking about a run and a half worse with Contreras. The opponent's OPS, hopefully nobody gets mad at me for saying OPS, was Plus. 100 points more. Now, that's one month into the season. But remember, this is about the time. It, it was several weeks later they make the change. And all I'm saying is this was a mutiny by the Cardinals pitching staff. That's what it was. Now, we're, we're going back now two months. But that doesn't happen unless every pitcher goes, we got to change this. We don't like throwing to this guy. It's different if it's one guy. You can have Kisner be a personal catcher for whoever the hell you want. You don't sit a catcher from the big leagues for seven years for eight days unless it's something substantial. I, uh, I got the updated stats. So this is full season total. By the way, what site is this? Baseball reference. I just went to the pitching splits for the entire team. Okay, how about this? The Cardinals pitching staff had a 0.00 ERA when Trey Barreras was, uh, was catching down there. There you go. Yeah, so bring him back. But... It's not as bad as it was. Now Contreras' is catching ERA is 4.92. Kiz is a flat four. And OPS-wise, uh, Contreras is about 52 points higher. So it's not as bad as it was. I'm just saying. But the stats still favor Kiz just, behind the plate. Sure. It just seems like the pitchers seem a little whiny. When they came out and they bitched about Contreras, it's just like, oh, oh, it's his fault. Okay. No, you weren't. You weren't throwing down the pipe, letting it hang. That's Contreras' fault. That's just, listen, that's what it looked like to me. And now he just takes a, he's taking a beating, and it's like, now you're trading him. And it's like, I don't know, man. I don't know. He was an escape goat, I thought. That's well, what it seemed like. The pitching staff overall has been horrible, yeah. and it still is. The last I looked, they're, they're still right around – they've been around 25th in baseball in ERA, whatever it is, 23, 24, 25. That's where they've been living all season long. So the pitching staff – is really, really bad this year. And, and by the way, I don't blame Contreras more than I blame the pitching staff. And I don't blame Contreras more than I blame the Cardinals front office. But I do think Contreras gets some of the blame. But Cardinals, you watched this guy for seven years. <laughs> he played for the frickin' Cubs. By the way, also, why do, you think the Cubs, why do you think the Cubs didn't want to bring him back? And, and I don't, listen, this is like a tough, it's a tough decision. But you knew what he was as a catcher. You watched him for 100 games, literally play against your team mm-hmm. over the last seven years. So can you guys put a percentage on the fault behind Mo, Ollie, et cetera, Mad Marine? What do you think? Well, I'm going to include DeWitt with Mo. Okay. So if you're going 
front office versus managerial staff. Wait. I'll go eighty. I'll go eighty percent of the blame goes on Dewitt and Mo. What are we blaming? Twenty percent Ollie. What are we blaming exactly for? Everything. Okay. Well, Everything that's happening. Okay. Well, that's tough for me to say because there are two different schools of thought. There is, are you blaming them for not competing for a World Series, and then are you blaming them for being almost last place in the NL Central? It's every single I, negative thing that's going on, who's to blame? Okay. I, I blame DeWitt and the personal salary cap that the Cardinals have, which is basically just middle of the road in the MLB, for not competing for a World Series. However... I don't think DeWitt has put this organization in a position necessarily to be as bad as they are right now, except that Moe's his guy. And so there's, I'm sure Charlie will think that whatever blame that you give to Mo automatically trickles up and goes to DeWitt, which I don't think is incorrect. But Mosellock, I, I got to put Mosellock up there. And he's admitted he he's exonerated, whether he truly thinks this or not, or whether he was just saying this on TV with uh, Martin Kilcoin. He said that, you know, he put it nicer than this, but he basically said that Ali Barmal and the coaching staff has been dealt bad players. So he, he kind of t- took the blame and the heat off of the coaching staff. What about the players? Wait, did he or did he say that Ali's job is safe? Oh, That's I, a different thing. He, remember, remember, firing Ali— i got to go find it now. Firing Ali is another indictment, would be another indictment of himself. Let's also remember that. Yeah. What about oh, the, I know that. What about the players? Players get a, a ton of uh, criticism yeah. too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. People are asking. They got to play. I mean, e- even if Ollie made all the right bullpen decisions or lineup decisions, the boys got to go do. It. Ollie's not the one with the bat in his hands or the or he's not throwing the pitches no. or calling the pitches or whatever or catching the fly balls. So the players are the ones who are playing the game. Miles tried to call his own pitches recently and got rocked. Spartan forty four. Hmm. Oh, the pitching staff overall. And, and this is where I think we need, we need to focus, in my opinion, on the nuance. Nobody's saying it's all Wilson Contreras' fault. If you're saying that, to me, that's not, a, that's not an intelligent response to this. But he's part of it. I mean, he's, he's not a great defensive catcher, but you knew that. Yeah. You knew he was an offense-first catcher. And this is where, again, if we're kind of living in the nuance, when people act like, oh, this is all because Yadier Molina is no longer here. Well, you don't think that's part of it? I mean, how, how can we value Yadier Molina so much for the intangibles for two decades and then not act like there's, there's not going to be a huge drop-off when Yadier leaves? And I know he was not here for the whole season last year. Puerto but I'm Rico. Talking about, but I'm talking about overall, the 20-year drop-off from Yadier, you could always count on him being the catcher, to someone else. If Yadier is a first ballot Hall of Famer, which we all think, especially in St. Louis, that he is, well, then there should be a drop-off. <sighs> Can we sign Yachty again? Can we get him back? Yes. Wayno As manager. And probably Pujols. Let's get them all back again. Let's rekindle that fire, Charlie. Just for the second don't, half here. And by the way, this team want... won last night, and you're, you're focusing on the negative I didn't see the again. Game. You're focusing on Nine the negative. Game. You're focusing on the negative I'm again. Not watching that. You're doing this to me. You're making me be negative. It's I'm your fault. I'm asking questions. It's your fault. I'm sticking up for Contreras. I actually like him. So do I. It's his fault. Hey, Cam, do you see the Brookdale Farms is on, is for sale for $5 million, almost $6 million. I think you and several other Blues alumni should buy it and turn it into a water park. You'll make buku bucks. Hockey Bob. Man, water parks suck. It's fun with insurance, probably. Yeah, that's an easy thing to do. Weren't we at Brookdale Farms? Yeah, it's beautiful down there. That was a couple years ago? Yep, 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 yep. They have the, uh, the corn maze? Yep. It's scary down there. You can have weddings and stuff like that, too. It's a nice venue. It's really, really nice. A lot of acreage. You can do a lot down there. Flood. You might get flooded in here and there because of a big river. Eh, doesn't matter. That's part of the scariness of the right. corn maze. Yeah. Is if you could be hurt in a flood. Well, yeah. You could get lost in the corn, and then uh, you could uh, fall in the river and die. It's pretty cool. Hmm. Yeah, the, uh, God, that Rockwood Park, you know, right down there in House Springs. Remember I told you about that? They had to shut it down because of all the fights and stuff. <laughs> Recently? Yeah. But they opened it back up, and they showed it. And I kids fighting? God, yes. So like high school kids going there to fight? Drunk out of their minds. So they're drinking beer at night? Th- like they are hundreds and hundreds of kids. Really? And the people, locals, are like, these kids are so dumb. He goes, there's no way in hell I would even walk into that river. You know how many uh, hooks and you know little lines I have caught in that? And he goes, there's a big cliff right there. And these kids don't even ch- – listen, when you're jumping off cliffs and you're in the river – 
I don't care if that's a deep part and it's notorious, it's always deep. There's different debris that gets clogged up. The river changes every freaking day. So these kids will go and they won't check down there to see if there's a stump or anything clogged up. And a kid jumped off the other day and hit something and died, never came back up. Uh, Yeah, dude. Like, that's crazy. Fist fights and loud music. Um, You know, people bringing bottles down there and breaking. Just Hoosier Fest. Anyway. I found it's a the good qu- spot to take your family. What? I found the question I was looking for. I have not listened to this back yet, but as far as John Mosellock's answer on uh, Ali Marmol with Martin Kilcoin. You and I talked a couple of weeks ago, and you said, I believe in Ali Marmol and his staff. Is his job safe beyond this year? When do you analyze Ali and the role he played this year? Yeah, I don't think the coaches have any fault in this. Um, you know, they're handed to players. It's, it's, you know, unfortunately it didn't work. Um, but I think Ali and his, his group do a really good job. They work really hard, and, um, you know, they continue to do that. But it, I think, you know, their level of frustration is probably as real as the fan base. He said that they're handed the players and they're not at fault. So my interpretation is that they were handed bad players. No, I get that. But also, super sloppy base running, bad defense. That, that's something that we always attach to the coaching staff. That's something we destroyed Matheny for, and we lifted Schilt up because of that. And now if you want to say it's all on the players for that, I mean, base running, we're talking about just fundamentally sound base running. I know the shift, that getting rid of the shift has really affected the Cardinals defensively. But this is not the Cardinal way. I know we joke about George yeah. Kissel and all the that. Cardinal way. But the Cardinal way was never this bad under Matheny, even when Matheny was fired. So to me, yes, the coaching staff, when we're talking about sloppy base running and sloppy defense, that is something the coaching staff can clean up, in my opinion. So long as Cam wants to bring back old, retired, over-the-hill players, why not just sign Nolan Ryan, Tom Blavin, <laughs> Wilbur Wood? Now that's a great pitching trio. Who's the first million dollar guy in, in sports? Go. Oh man. Who? Dave Parker. No. I, have, I don't know. First million dollar per what year? year. Million dollar, yeah, per year guy. Might have to vet and verify on this one. This popped away. Is head. it Nolan Ryan? Yeah. So, what year? I'm gonna say 1983. Mm. I think it's 78. 1978, he made a schmill. So he was the first one. No NBA players made a million. He was the first million dollar guy in sports. No betting and verifying. Yeah, I think we should on this one. Sorry, dudes. I didn't. It popped in my head. I thought I read that somewhere. I think 1980 is the year. Is it the year? That looks like it. I mean, hell, he made $25 million in his career, which. It was good for anybody, but especially when you played from 66 to 93. Gosh. There you go. Nolan Ryan, it comes up. What's 1980. Wow, homie. First million-dollar contract, hockey. This is Now, this just came up when I Googled it. Get right out of town. No, we're talking about a 10-year deal. Okay. Oh, so, so $100,000 a year? Uh, now, this just came up when I Googled it. I'm going to say Bobby Clark. A Gordy Howe. A different Bobby. Bobby Hull. Or Bobby Hull. Bobby Hull in 1972 uh, that's right. made a deal with the Winnipeg Jets signing a 10-year deal worth $1 million. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's the first thing that came up on Google, folks, okay? That's right. But I, I think, mean, but I think it's a million dollar a year was Nolan Ryan, yeah. right? Correct. Okay. As as rightfully so. So was he that much better than everybody else? Who was the next guy in line? Like 800 or something? Back in uh, – oh, here we go. It says Dave Parker. What? In 1979, Dave Parker signed a five-year, $7.5 million deal with the Pirates. Whoa. Is so, that accurate? We're doing this on the fly. Doing this on the fly, folks. That's the only so way we do we know for how. you. That's what we do here for you. So what did Dave Parker, what are you seeing here? I am seeing. But maybe he got $1 million later in the deal. Uh, uh, so it's base there's pay. There's a lot of bonuses yeah. and uh, stuff yes. like that, that they're adding to it, it looks like. So that's tough to see. But his base salary was seven seventy-five thousand. Which is pretty good. So, oh, a lot deferred. He had 250k deferred from 1988 until 2007. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So, what would Nolan Ryan make in his career? 25.7. That's it. Yeah, for 27 years. Wow, that's it. Yeah. Back in the day, man. No, but I mean, he started in the late 60s. God. Yeah. 
What's his first year? 68, 69 ish? 66. 66. Do you think he's making good money now just being Nolan Ryan? He's probably got I hope ranches. So. Well, he was running the Rangers for well, a long time. Okay. I mean, there are. Successfully. Like, you look at a guy like that, you want him to make a lot of money. Like, I feel like. I mean, think about this, though. There are famous guys who are rich, and there are famous guys who get a lot of stuff for free. I'm sure he gets everything for free. Yeah, dude. So even if he doesn't have the bank account that all these current athletes have. He's living a good life. He's got the opportunities. Yeah. I mean, he's not. if he walks into a restaurant in Texas or wherever, uh, and they go, oh, my gosh, that's Nolan Ryan. His bill's covered. Yeah. Okay. You'd hope. But you're not, not every time. I bet you he has ranches that they oh. found oil on. Oh, Just knowing him, yeah. I bet you he has multiple ranches of thousands of acres, and they probably found some black gold. It's, it's just popping Texas up. Texas tea. It's just, it's just <laughs> sizzling, sizzling in the, uh, just like popping up from the ground. Like, yeah. Yeah, we'll buy this land. We'll buy this land. Now, oil could be seeping up through the, gr- through the ground. It doesn't mean there's a huge lake underneath, too. Yeah. Wouldn't that be cool back in the day? You just bought a bunch of just acreage in, in southwest Texas. Look at this. The first thing that comes found, up, Beverly Hillbillies. You found gold. Yeah. Black gold, baby. I just uh, Googled Nolan Ryan Acres. First article, Texas Monthly. This one covers around 18,000 acres, 28 square miles. Wow. Of hardcore brush country near Three Rivers. Three Rivers? He's got three rivers on his property? That's badass. From 2020, it says, we run about 1,500 to 1,800 cows on 25,000 combined acres wow. that we own and lease. That's awesome. Now, that's a pain in the ass to deal with, but you just have people, I guess, do it for you. Be cool to be a cowboy. Be nice to be a cowboy. Rhinestone cowboy. Man, you know who's a cowboy? It's John Winsick. She has a prey. He has a ranch down in the middle of Missouri. He's a legit cowboy. Wire. John Winsick. Look his ass up. That dude was scary. Nicest guy in the world. He cut me from Team Quebec. Remember that, Daddy? Remember John Winsick cut me from Team Quebec and you kind of lost your mind? <laughs> John Wicks, he's actually a cowboy. How old? 68. 70. Oh, man, he looks damn good. You shake his hand, he'll put you down, dude. Mm -hmm. He will put you down. God, I love, he just tells me these stories about what he has to deal with on the property. When the horses get caught up in in barbed wire, he's got to take the horse and, like, unwrap it, you know? Cowboy stuff, Cole. Things that me and you don't know how to do. Yeah. We would be lost. There's blue, especially co- you, uh, especially me. Mm-hmm. I'm rather white collar. I have some. You're not. You're not I, an outdoorsy guy. I, right? I have some blue. No, I, you're not. I, I don't like getting my hands dirty. Charlie's outdoorsy. Charlie grew up a little blue collar, kind of like you run around outside and stuff like that, didn't you? Well, we had a crick. Yeah, you had a crick. Now, I'm not. I'm not trying to say I'm uh, Steve Irwin. All I'm saying is, we had a big yard. We had a crick, yeah, and we maybe. were a Winnebago family. So we went camping all the time. Hiking, camping. I'm not trying to outdoors. say that I'm a guy who no, can. I know. Uh, be an Eagle Scout. But we did spend a lot of time in the camp, yep. in the camper, and uh, we spent a lot of time in the crick. And whenever you grow up that way, don't you appreciate nature? You do. You appreciate nature a lot more. I don't think Cole ever goes outside. When can he? Well, he's got the beautiful golf course there in Dublin. Mm-hmm. Well, you you grew up on a golf course? No, I did yeah, not. Yeah, you did. I'm not a golfer. I uh, Upper middle class. Do you have acreage? I have, no. Just a, a nice house in a suburban neighborhood. We That's uh, cool. a, a renovated kitchen when I was in middle school. Re- oh, uh, you uh, fancy lad! A, a renovated wow. back patio oh, when I was god. in uh, when I was in high school. Oh god! Those were my mom's pet projects that took Privilege. forever, but they work. They look good now, but no acreage. Uh, I do have some blue collar values. I feel now. Yeah. Yep. Uh, now I don't like getting Ohio, my Ohio, dude. I don't like getting my hands dirty. Uh, I don't like sweating unless I'm working out. So. I get you on that. Some people might look at me and go, eh, you're not that tough, And to which I say, eh, maybe you're right, maybe you're wrong. But uh, I, I got a little bit of blue collar in me because my parents are from a very small town, blue, like Rust Belt town. Oh, yeah. And I so it, it's in me deep down. 